my earliest memory would probably be me visiting my dad in prison. I knew that he was staying away from drugs and bad people and stuff like that. So I, I kind of always looked forward to dad going to jail growing up. I know that's a sad thing to say, but at some point I thought jail was a good place. this girl's parents ended up charging me for assault causing bodily harm. Did about two years in juvie. That's where I started doing things that a 14, 15 year old girl, you know, wouldn't be doing. And I was um, on the streets uh, using drugs. I was selling my body on the streets. You know, I had nowhere to go. I was pretty much homeless. I was like living out of bathrooms and restaurants and stuff like that. And violence was just a, another thing you needed to know how to handle yourself. That's where it all began for me. I'm doing the same trip my dad did. I was repeating his footsteps. I was classified max security within two months that I hit federal prison. Uh, I guess they got tired of me getting into fights and they therefore then placed me on a program called Management Protocol. You know, I'm somebody that has never thought of suicide ever and never thought of it since. But when I was in it, yeah, I sure felt it. They made me feel like I killed people for fun, whereas I've never taken another human life before. But they won't, they sure knew how to make me feel like I wanted to take my life. It was very cold, very empty, just a very sad, dark place. It wasn't enough for me to walk around in. I would feel like I was getting tinier in the cell. It would sometimes feel like I was constantly being shrunk, like being caved in from it, how small it was. It is torture. It really is. It is designed to break you. It's designed to destroy you. I knew that I was a good person and I knew that I deserved more in life and I knew that I wasn't that violent and I wasn't that out of control and I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't going to be a part of that, you know, statistic as First Nations women being inside and being on management protocol. I was uh, starting to have more, uh, more violent thoughts. I would just cause chaos just to feel that I wasn't a ghost. It just went on like that for years. I went into a courtroom one time and a judge didn't know what management protocol was. So my lawyer had to explain what management protocol was. So that's when it hit me that okay there's something really wrong here i was in touch with prisoners legal services that uh, got me in touch with bc civil liberties the further they looked into it they wanted to jump on board with getting my story out there and you know helping me take this to court and find justice with this because this is an organization that you know make change My life now is good. It's really good. I'm in a really good place. Um, I have a daughter and I am soon to be expected mom again. 
this August, so I am really uh, blessed with that. I could have had this life long ago if they would have gave me that opportunity. I know what's still going on. To keep them in that setting longer than they have to be is just uncalled for and it's, it's inhumane. It really is. I did the majority of my time on in solitary confinement.